Today, we will be discussing about adenoids. Myself, Dr. Vivek Shashindran, Consultant, ENT, Head and Neck Surgeon. So, in my previous talk, I did refer to what exactly adenoids were. Adenoids are nothing but it is an aggregation of lymphoid tissue, just like the tonsils. However, this particular lymphoid tissue is found in the posterior aspect of the nasal cavity, in the area that we refer to as the nasopharynx. Now, what issues would a patient with uh, adenoid enlargement or hypertrophy present to you with? I wouldn't say it is a disease. Now, this is something physiological in the sense every child during the growing phase has some amount of enlargement of the adenoid or the lymphoid tissue in these areas, basically the adenoids and the tonsils. However, in some children or in, in a very small percentage of patients, the rate of growth or the enlargement is significant so as to give rise to certain symptoms. So the most common symptoms that the patients present to us are mouth breathing, snoring, sleep disturbance, frequent awakenings in the night. So the children would not have a sound sleep, rather the sleep would be disturbed. They tend to wake up frequently. There can be nocturnal enuresis, what we refer to as bedwetting, that is urination during sleep. Now, apart from this, these children have an open mouth posture. So generally, if you see them during the daytime, you would notice that these children always sit with their mouth open. The reason being they are not able to breathe comfortably through the nose. Now, some parents notice hearing loss in their children. They would say that the child is not responding to call or they would probably say that uh, while watching the TV, the child tends to keep the volume on the higher side. Now, these are early signs of hearing loss which could be associated with adenoid enlargement. In the school, these children may not perform all that well. Sleep is affected, so they tend to show excessive tiredness. They tend to be very dull. So, sometimes the teacher may point out the issue that the child is not performing or not attentive in school. You also have a subset of patients who would probably visit a dentist saying that the child has proclined teeth. Now these are sequelae of mouth breathing. So when a child continues to mouth breathe for months, years, what happens is that the upper teeth, they tend to get elevated. So they have proclined teeth. So eventually you have these subset of patients who would seek the help of a dentist for correction of these kind of changes. And then the dentist would refer these patients back to a ENT surgeon, asking them to go see if there is anything that could be a cause for nasal obstruction. And long-standing mouth breathing can even change the facial profile. So these subset of patients who have significant adenoid enlargement have something called as adenoid facies, which is very peculiar. So these children uh, have certain facial features which are striking. Now, how do you confirm adenoid enlargement? Now, there are two ways. One is by doing a simple nasal endoscopy where you can introduce a camera into the nasal cavity and visualize the adenoids. However, if the child is really young, it may be difficult to carry out this procedure. The second option would be to do a simple X-ray. The X-ray would actually reveal enlargement of the adenoids and would tell us as to how much of an airway narrowing this particular enlargement is causing. The treatment options are medical and surgical. So when it comes to medical treatment, generally the treatment option would be nasal corticosteroid sprays. And most of these patients would have associated allergy. So treating associated allergy with antihistaminics or anti-allergics is what generally done for most of these patients initially. So usually we give a trial of three months, reassess the patients and see if these patients symptoms have kind of improved or not. Now, if there is no improvement and if the symptoms are still persisting, that is when we consider surgical options. So we would discuss about the surgical options for adenoid hypertrophy in the subsequent session. Thank you.